The threat of strong to damaging winds increasing for tomorrow as a new storm begins to work in and overlaps record heat and humidity likely to form strong storms for many tomorrow. Welcome in folks, great to see you on this wonderful Tuesday out there. And yeah, it is uh, the second day of the week and uh, that heat and humidity is really about at its peak right now as we had forecasted. And I think tomorrow a bit of a new threat begins to loom. Remember, we've had days of heat and humidity without a lot of storms under this ridge. Little piece of energy though tomorrow gonna move in under that ridge and help to spark off some storms and they're finally gonna be able to take advantage of all of that instability that we've been building up here over the past couple of days. And I think that could lead to very strong winds for many of us embedded in these thunderstorms. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that today. We'll continue to talk about this heat dome. Uh, is there any uh, long lasting relief in sight? Uh, how much longer is it gonna be hanging around? And we'll also talk about some other severe weather potential outside of tomorrow's threat as we go throughout the week ahead. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date. Uh, again, summertime things can change quick and you'll definitely wanna be the first to know when we do get these changes to the forecast. All right, with that said, let's just dive right on into it and start with our satellite imagery. And you can see, uh, yeah, we've got um, a very interesting area to note here. And this is the area I've been talking about uh, that could potentially fire off some strong to severe storms in the Southeast tomorrow. You can see it there off the Carolina coastline. In fact, I posted about this on social media, I wanna say about four days ago or so, uh, saying that this could impact the weather and it definitely will by tomorrow. It's going to bring in a pocket of cooler air aloft over all this warm air and uh, really fire up some very strong storms. And that'll be its whole segment uh, we'll have for that in today's video. Now, outside of there, yeah, I still have this ridge kind of in place. It's weaker now than it was uh, maybe yesterday, but uh, that does not mean the temperatures have come down. In fact, today is probably the highest um, that the temperatures will be for many of us. Now, some of us tomorrow might be a little bit warmer. We'll see. But uh, I really think today is the peak of the heat wave that we've been forecasting. Although, again, still going to last a bit longer. But today, I think, really is the worst of it as we finally got some more pieces of energy. They're going to spark off some uh, higher in storm chances, which will help to, of course, keep the temperatures down just a little bit. Uh, you can see, speaking of storm chances on the outside of that ridge of high pressure, uh, we do have uh, some storms firing up there into the Midwest. Uh, nothing new that's been what's uh, it's been happening basically for the past, uh, I don't know, a couple of months, it feels like. Uh, now, as for radar imagery, yeah, again, it's still that edge today that's getting the worst of it as I'm recording this right around four o'clock Eastern time. Uh, and again, you can see all those showers and storms from uh, Santa Fe all the way up to Cedar Rapids, Omaha, Madison, even into portions of Michigan getting in on that stormy action. And even the Mississippi River Valley uh, getting enough flow out of the Gulf to help produce some showers and storms. But I want you to notice uh, the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast is still quite dry today. Uh, this has been multiple days in a row that it has just been sweltering hot without really much of any thunderstorm activity. Uh, and that's just been building up the atmosphere. Nothing has really taken the energy out of it. So I think that's one of the reasons tomorrow, I think it'd be such a, a, a big day, honestly, for a lot of folks with just a lot of strong winds uh, in some of these storms. Now the Northeast tomorrow, not so much. It's going to be the Southeast, but I do think uh, some of these pieces of energy to uh, your West are eventually going to rotate around and impact you throughout the week ahead. And uh, we should just generally slowly increase storm chances for many of us as we slowly work ahead throughout this week. All right, uh, let's take a look at another thing that uh, we need to talk about, and that's the tropics. We do have our first named storm, so let's switch on over and take a look at Andrea. Well, here she is, Tropical Storm Andrea, and you're probably saying, well, Gerald, where? <laughs> and uh, yeah, not the most impressive thing that you've ever seen, and uh, honestly, I'm not even sure that the fish under it uh, know that anything is going on, but we do have a very naked swirl here over the North Atlantic, and when I say the North Atlantic, I mean this thing is out there. I'll show you on the next map, uh, but uh, this is not near anybody, not near anything and uh, just kind of a swirl. Yesterday or overnight, it uh, was a little uh, more swirly, we'll call it, and had maybe a little bit more convection, uh, but today it's lost all convection, and funnily enough, today is when it uh, kind of gained the name, Andrea didn't even have it yesterday or early this morning, uh, but uh, the National Hurricane Center says it's spinning enough and it's closed off enough that this is technically a tropical storm, uh, so yeah, there's uh, how we're starting off Atlantic hurricane season. Yeah, not the most exciting thing ever, but I think after the past couple of years, we will take some of the quiet times uh, here during hurricane season. And I can guarantee, I'm sure eventually there will be a much bigger storm that we need to talk about. But uh, right now, uh, I really don't think we're going to get anything of significance in the month of June. This one, nada. I don't see anything in the models that suggests any sort of impactful storm uh, that would at least gain a name between now and the end of the month. We'll see what July holds. Uh, but um, yeah, not 
not too exciting. And you can see the forecast for this storm. Um, yeah, not not much going here. And I said I'd show you how far out this is. I mean, this is basically smack dab in the middle of the North Atlantic between uh, the United States and uh, Europe and Africa. Not doing a whole lot and should be dead by the time we get to this uh, this weekend or probably even before then. So uh, that's Andrea. Not the most exciting thing, but uh, worth uh, showing you as it is uh, something that uh, will be important by the time we get to the B name. You're going to be saying, well, what happened to the A name? Uh, well, I'll try to remember, this was Andrea, so not that exciting. All right, let's take a look now at that severe weather potential again tomorrow, I think the big day. Let's dive into some model data and I'll show you why I think that is. Well, the upper level map tells the story pretty well here and uh, this is what we're seeing today. Again, still just that very strong upper level ridge. Two areas to watch though. We've got this northern section we've been talking about. That's that ring of fire area where the jet stream's a lot stronger. It's helping to maintain some of those storms. Uh, but by the time we get into tonight and into uh, tomorrow, that area I showed you off the southeast coastline uh, begins to rear its ugly head here. And it's not super strong looking. Now you're looking at this map, you're thinking, all right, Gerald, uh, great. How is this of any significance? Well, uh, this is a pocket of cooler air. Remember, we are absolutely just toasting out there uh, and roasting at the surface. Uh, this little pocket of cooler air, and I know that's where kind of the height of it is, but really all of this right here is generally cooler air aloft than what we're seeing at the surface. Is, uh, where we've again got temperatures well up into the upper 90s, some areas kissing triple digits. Uh, so you've got this very warm air at the surface, and then you add the cold air above it. That creates instability in the atmosphere and a lot of thunderstorm fuel tomorrow afternoon, combined with the fact that the atmosphere has not been kind of reset for quite some time. And that's going to be a recipe for very strong to severe storms. And again, it's that area to the southeast we'll watch. Uh, could again still see those northerly storms here on the Ring of Fire, but I think the southeast tomorrow is where we have a bit of a unique setup. Another thing that's unique about this, I'll show you before we move on, is uh, the flow of some of these storms tomorrow. Before we get there, let me show you why it's going to be a little wonky. Well, we've got high pressure here uh, right over the Ohio Valley. We've got low pressure here. Uh, over Florida, and uh, it's the flow between the two that is going to get a little weird here, uh, at least for this part of the country. It's not often that we see severe storms rolling from maybe the north or the northeast and then moving south-southwest. That's exactly what's going to happen, though, tomorrow with this squeeze plate between these pieces of energy. Uh, yeah, it's going to be storms coming from a weird direction. Normally, if you have a westward-facing porch in the summertime, you've got a nice view of the storms rolling in. Tomorrow, it's going to be a bit of the opposite, so uh, that uh, it's just going to be kind of a weird weather day tomorrow in general. And you can see all this here from the uh, Storm Prediction Center. They see the threat as well. They're looking at it. They've issued a slight risk of severe weather from uh, Mobile all the way over to Panama City, all the way up into the Carolinas, so basically all of South Carolina, uh, much of North Carolina, Charlotte, up through the Triad, into the Triangle, back out towards Fayetteville and even towards the Sand Hills. Yeah, anybody in that uh, yellow area really going to run the risk of some pretty strong storms tomorrow. Again, zooming out, we can see strong storms anywhere shaded in, but it's the yellow area that I'm most concerned about. And you can see wind being the main threat. I'll be honest with you folks, I would not be surprised if this got bumped up a little bit even uh, by the time we get to tomorrow. Maybe a 30% chance instead of a 15% chance of wind. Uh, that would bring this to an enhanced risk. That's a level three out of five. I think the parameters are there for it. We'll see if the Storm Prediction Center pulls the trigger, but uh, a loaded atmosphere tomorrow for sure. And we won't quite be done by Thursday. Again, still that energy in the southeast could fire up some strong storms and still some of that northern energy as well uh, with uh, just the jet stream racing over portions of the Midwest. Once again, could produce strong storms there by our Thursday as well. All right, let's take a look at some brand new model guidance. It's one of the reasons I waited on today's video for the evening time. Let's switch on over, take a look at that and show this to you a little more up close. Future Radar brought to you by the High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. Uh, I think doing a pretty good job of depicting how this will go tomorrow. Uh, this is right now, or I guess this evening when many of you are watching this. Again, a couple pop-up storms, nothing too crazy. Uh, per usual, overnight tonight, those storms will begin to die out. You know, normal pulse convection this time of year. Uh, you can see really clearing out by the overnight. Now, here we go. Waking up tomorrow morning, uh, getting out the door, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., all quiet. It's the afternoon hours that that heat, that humidity builds. Here we go by three o'clock, starting to see some of those popcorn showers and storms developing and in areas that we haven't seen a lot of in the past couple of days, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, starting to see some of those afternoon storms beginning to bubble, likely to kind of start in the mountains and then slowly work their way into the foothills. And here you go. Watch radar just explode here with convection by the time we get to uh, you know, 5, 6, 7 p.m. The Carolinas covered with storms. And um, these are not going to be supercells. These are going to be multi-cell clusters 
of storms. And you can see here though, by the overnight, they keep on going and with just a little bit of extra wind shear uh, due to, again, that piece of energy working over, this almost turns into a bit of a mesoscale convective system. Uh, again, starts as afternoon storms in the Carolinas, congeals into almost more of a line, crosses the Savannah River into Georgia, uh, gets into southwest uh, Georgia, into southern Alabama, into the Florida Panhandle, and then finally loses steam and dies out uh, by the early morning hours of Thursday. So uh, again, a pretty impressive cluster of storms there. And by the time we get to Thursday afternoon, uh, you know, the model doesn't quite go out that far, but uh, we'll probably do it again to a lesser extent. So one question you probably have is, Gerald, well, why you know, is tomorrow such a big deal? And again, I say a big deal loosely. It's not going to be a tornado threat. There's not going to be probably much of a hail threat, but the wind threat... Uh, again, it could be one of the higher end threats we've seen in quite some time with thunderstorms. And here's why. This is a model sounding. And again, I'll walk you through what this means and uh, what matters. Now, the reason we're not going to see any sort of tornado threat tomorrow is this part right here. This is our hodograph and it's pretty ugly. I'll be honest with you. That is not a, a hodograph that screams severe weather usually. But what does scream severe weather in a big way is this box here on the left. This is our uh, skew T log P diagram, and uh, it shows a lot of juice in the atmosphere. Again, temperature at the surface in the upper 90s, dew point around 70. Uh, it's pretty normal summertime environment, but what's different is our lapse rates are a lot steeper, just meaning the air is cooling quickly with height, and that's leading to very unstable parcels at the surface. And that means surface cape values down here uh, near 4,000 joules per kilogram, potentially up to 5,000 joules per kilogram would not shock me at all. Uh, that's explosive energy. Uh, and there's explosive energy going upwards and downwards. When you talk about D cape, that's kind of the inverse of this. Uh, that's energy going down 1,600 joules per kilogram. Just to give you an idea of 800 joules per kilogram, it's normally the threshold for strong downbursts or microbursts. We're running double that here on this sounding. And uh, again, just a lot of things screaming that we could see a very strong downburst energy tomorrow. So these storms are going to fire up super big. Uh, we're lacking a lot of wind shear. So some of them are going to come crashing back down and all that energy is going to come down to the surface. I would not be surprised to see isolated places get 80 plus mile an hour wind gusts tomorrow uh, pretty easily. Now, again, not everyone's going to see it. Some of us are going to get rain and it's not going to be that windy. Some of us are going to get the core of these storms and you're going to get trees taken down in your yard. Uh, you're going to have the lawn furniture blown around. So, you know, it's like any other severe weather day. Not everyone's going to get the worst of it, but I think enough of us will get a pretty big impact out of it. And it's absolutely worth talking about. All right. Zoom things back out, just talk about the east in general for tomorrow. Uh, we'll kind of move this ahead. Here you go. Wednesday morning, still rocking showers and storms up into the Midwest, up into the Northern Plains. Again, even a little bit of a flooding threat there. Strong winds, isolated tornadoes, and large hail uh, per usual. But again, wind being the biggest threat there, uh, just like the southeast. Tomorrow afternoon, a uh, pretty rainy day, honestly, up into Minnesota, Wisconsin. Plenty of showers and storms developing. Again, you'll notice tomorrow a lot more widespread storminess than maybe we we're seeing uh, today, except for maybe the I-95 corridor of the Northeast, still kind of dry, but even higher end storm potential through Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, uh, through the Ohio Valley in general, compared to what we have seen for your Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we talked about the Southeast already, so we'll skip that. And you'll see, again, just complexes of storms riding the ridge here, just kind of moving across this area. And eventually, I think by the time we get to maybe overnight Wednesday into your Thursday, some of these complexes could finally make it into the Northeast and give us some relief from that heat. At least that'll be the hope. And I think, uh, again, that's why today's probably the peak of this heat dome or this heat wave. Just the highest amount of temperatures compared to the lowest amount of precip today. Start to add those precip chances, though, by tomorrow, Thursday, so on and so forth. We're going to bring things hopefully a little bit closer to reality. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the rest of the week ahead with some more maps. Let's take a look at how this uh, heat dome is going to kind of evolve over the next couple of days. Again, a big ridge in the east. Uh, right now, but between that southern energy and energy out west, we're going to slowly begin to break it down here by the time we get to the middle and the end of this week. Uh, you can see here by the weekend, uh, yeah, we start to turn a lot more zonal with the flow. That means temperatures are still going to be mild. It's still going to be muggy. However, we're going to bring it from, you know, temperatures at maybe triple digits back down into the uh, lower to mid 90s for a lot of us. 
And with that, still going to see some complexes of storms here in the northern tier of the country. Afternoon thunderstorms are going to make a big return, I think, for many of us in the southeast as that ridge again kind of loosens its grip a little bit. Now, by the time we get to next week, we could get a more pronounced storm system here into the northeast uh, by maybe next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I know that's a big time frame, but we'll just say the middle part of next week. How about that? Or at least the middle of the work week. Um, there looks to be more of a defined storm. So we'll track that later on. But for now, uh, just know that that's something that we'll probably have to talk about coming up in the future. Uh, now, severe weather potential, you can see these are the ingredients for it. Now, obviously, tomorrow we'll need to watch the southeast. But other than that, uh, most of the big severe weather potential stays up into the northern plains, into the Midwest, rounds of it trying to make their way into the northeast, really more of what we've seen uh, back up that way. Now, as for rainfall, uh, we'll pick this up on Thursday afternoon. Again, plenty of afternoon thunderstorms in the southeast, more organized complexes of storms up to the north. Uh, that could definitely produce um, all hazards, but especially strong wind uh, up that way. Again, rotating through the Midwest into the Northeast, uh, more of the same afternoon thunderstorms in the Southeast. And that, I think, really is the story for the rest of this week um, here for many of us. Now, the good news with that is that means temperature is going to come back down to reality as we increase those rain chances and as we break down this ridge. Here's tomorrow afternoon uh, anomalies. So again, the brighter the reds slash the orange, whatever color you want to call that, uh, the more above normal the temperatures are compared to what they should be, and then vice versa for blue. Uh, again, a pretty chilly, wet day for Minnesota and Wisconsin tomorrow. You're avoiding the heat for sure. Same thing back down into New Mexico and portions of the Four Corners. Uh, now, out east tomorrow, if you're not seeing rain or any cloud cover from storms nearby, yeah, it's going to be another scorcher. If you get the rain, though, that'll help to at least make things a little bit nicer by the evening time. Uh, obviously, it's still going to be muggy, but um, the temperatures themselves will be a little bit lower. You can see that's the theme really. I think even by the time this is Thursday, that northern energy definitely dipping back down into the northeast. Finally done with the worst of the heat there by, um, again, your Thursday afternoon. The southeast afternoon storm is going to uh, bring us back down to reality. Still very hot mornings, hot afternoons. Uh, the evenings, though, going to be much um, much cooler with these storm potential. Uh, and again, more it's just really more of that, folks. If you get an afternoon storm, obviously it's going to be cooler. If you don't, it's still going to be hot. Uh, but uh, we'll definitely see higher in chances of storms in that northern belt with the ring of fire and then those afternoon storm chances in the southeast. Although, again, tomorrow being a bit of a more organized day for severe weather potentially with a lot of strong gusty winds. All right, well, that's all I got for you on this Tuesday. Uh, again, take tomorrow serious, folks. I think uh, plenty of strong wind reports uh, going to be coming out of the Carolinas, Virginia and Georgia. And then probably back to more of a pulsy storm environment throughout the rest of the week in the southeast and maintaining that ring of fire threat for strong to severe storms up north. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe. We'll see you all tomorrow.